Come with us this time to historic Oxford, city of dreaming spires and famous university colleges. Fabulous, I'm sure, on a great summer's day, less so on a wintry Valentine's weekend. Attempting to take in the historic sites whilst dodging film crews everywhere. At least our hotel looks impressive, but wait, it's actually a converted prison with cells for rooms. So question is, did we have a good time? Well, I think we managed to struggle our way on through it. So come with us to take a look around. On arrival, our first stop was the Westgate Shopping Centre, just a short walk round from our hotel. But before some retail therapy, we headed up to their roof terrace to one of their fantastic choice of restaurants. Options included Mowgli for Indian street food, Alchemist for cocktails and Sticks and Sushi for Japanese. However, we opted for the rather colourful Victor's restaurant with its Hamptons inspired interior. Where we soon settled in for our Valentine lunch date, checking out the menu with a drink that is, once the wife had made her mind up about what seat she actually wanted. The restaurant's menu is modern American small plates, so although we had a lot of Japanese items, they also did steaks and seafood and salads. But in her eagerness to move, the wife had actually gifted me the seat with the best view of the rooftops of Oxford. And the restaurant has since added some igloos for hire out on that terrace during the winter months. And following an afternoon of retail therapy, eating and drinking, we headed a short walk round the corner to our hotel. Oxford has a great train service and park and ride scheme, however we opted to drive and park at the hotel. But be warned, overnight parking in Oxford is currently around £40 a night. So make sure you call ahead to the concierge to book one of these limited spaces out the front, which are slightly cheaper at £34 a night currently. We booked this hotel because it had bags of character. It was originally a castle and then a prison and now a luxury boutique hotel. Malmaison on Oxford adjoins the historic castle and prison, but has taken over one of the cell block wings, which gives the hotel its unique character. The centerpiece converted prison wing is certainly impressive with its restored gantries and vaulted ceiling, but the rooms are somewhat luxurious than the previous prisoner accommodation. This is a boutique hotel after all. The cell block is impressive enough by daytime, but at night with the mood lighting is even more atmospheric and you'll be pleased to know these wooden stairs are no longer in use. You don't have to bring your luggage up those. The hotel has all the modern conveniences of things like lifts. And at one end at ground level, you will find a staircase taking you down to the basement level where they have maintained one cell for the guests to experience. And if you choose to stay in one of the character cell rooms, it's effectively made up of three of these, two combined making up the bedroom with the third being the adjoining bathroom. Now staying in the character cell rooms is obviously appealing and there is no shortage of videos out there showcasing these. However, stay tuned because we will show you an alternative room type in which we stayed. However, first we return to the floor of the cell block known as A-Wing and out to their outside space that they use during the warmer months regularly to their amusingly called exercise yard. And this would be a great bonus space during the warm summer months, unlike today. And here you get a great view of Oxford Castle and Prison. And although we did not have time to visit, I'll put links in the description to their tours where you can climb the tower and tour their crypts and cells. Returning to the lobby, there are two further exits to courtyards on either side, the one on the left taking you to the exterior entrance to Chez Mal, the on-site bar and brasserie where we ate that evening. 
and crossing over to the second courtyard on the other side, here you will find the visitor entrance to Oxford Castle and Prison. But also the historic mound and original location of a Norman keep, the first fortress on this site. This is where you will also find the House of Correction, the modern wing where you will find the alternative room types. Wing has this great private event space up on the roof and runs parallel to the hotel driveway we walked down earlier. The rooms here offer better views than cell windows and if you are looking for a quieter location choose them on the far side overlooking the site of the original Norman Keep. Parts of the wing incorporate the historic character of the building but the rooms are all far more modern. We booked a club room for this very reason, but also felt that the rooms felt a little bit more cosy and inviting than a prison cell. The bathroom was spacious enough with a great separate shower and roll top bath, though could have done with a double vanity. And moving into the bedroom, we have a super king bed as opposed to a king bed and also the room felt much more light and airy due to the double doors, both an upgrade on the cell room option. Plus the large patio doors led you out to your own outside space on a private balcony, which gave you a fantastic view of the approach, giving you much more of a feel that you were staying in a castle than a prison, unless you're into that kind of thing. After getting ready, we headed down to Chez Mao, their on-site brasserie, as we booked a Valentine's package that included a three-course dinner and was cheaper, as we chose to say, Sunday night through to Monday. Once again, heading down into the basement, the bar and brasserie maintained that fantastic feel of the original castle. Here you could see how thick the original walls were and along with the curved ceilings and small prison windows really added to the atmosphere of this fantastic venue. The food was equally impressive considering it was also a fixed Valentine's option menu and the service equally was just as good. So with such a great setting we were in no rush and consequently might have just been the last to leave. But before bed had to take in that fantastic room view one last time, head of a good night's sleep for some busy sightseeing the next day. Unfortunately, by the following morning, the weather hadn't much improved. So after a spot of breakfast, we headed out to explore. Heading south towards the River Thames, our first port of call was Christchurch College. This is perhaps one of the most impressive colleges and also comes complete with its own cathedral. Many colleges will offer ticketed admission, however it is equally easy to explore them from their exteriors. And after a short walk across Christchurch Meadows, we arrived at the River Thames where you will find the head of the river pub with its punting station during the summer months. Circling back along the college, we took a cheeky peek over the walls before heading back into town. As there are so many colleges in Oxford, make sure you check out their admission, ticket prices and characters to make sure you target the right one during your visit. And if you're enjoying this video, we ask that you please hit that like and subscribe button so we can bring you even more great content in the future. But back to the tour in hand, and we headed towards the high street, opting to take in all of the great side streets and alleyways, as opposed to visiting the covered market on our way to the iconic Radcliffe Square. Now here it could have been very easy to get distracted by the very famous rotunda of the Radcliffe camera. However, we were heading to the University Church of St. Mary the Virgin 
opposite to take on their tower tour so we could get the best views from the spires of Oxford city centre. The tower tour at time of our visit was only £6 per person, but time slots have to be booked. However, we arrived early and they were very accommodating at letting us adjust our time. Despite some scaffold on one side due to some restoration, the first set of stairs takes you up to the original clock tower room. This, however, is followed by the slightly more challenging staircase, which are narrow, steep, and the only one. So if you meet traffic coming the other way, somebody needs to be prepared to jump into one of those windows to allow the other to pass. However, it is worth the effort and the price as you are rewarded with perhaps the best view of this famous building and the incredible surrounding architecture of the city. Passing through the archways, you can follow the balcony round to get a great view of All Souls College and then again to the far side on the south overlooking Christchurch College where we'd started our morning. Panoramic views done, it was time to head back the way we came, thankfully with no traffic jams, to start exploring some of the sites at ground level. Now many of these historic sites require pre-booking, and although we had not booked formal tours for either the Radcliffe Camera or Bodleian Library, we had hoped to experience them up close. However, soon found a slight spanner in our plans. As the Radcliffe Camera is a working university library, you can only visit it on a public tour at set times. However, we were more than happy to just appreciate it from the outside. Coming across the courtyard towards the Bodian Library, it was very apparent that the entire complex was closed to the public. Now we had planned to chance entry, However, as we turned the corner, it became apparent why, as there were movie studio trucks everywhere as they were closed for filming. Coming round the corner to the Sheldonian Theatre with its famous ceiling frescoes, we found all entrances to the Bodleian Library closed. This meant we could not see the famous old school quadrangle courtyard inside and all formal tours were not running either. Now we had hoped to secure time tickets at only £2.50 to the Divinity School, the medieval hall at the rear, famous for films such as Harry Potter, but it was not to be. So having to settle for a sneaky peek through the window, we crossed back across the courtyard to our last landmark to only be met with a strategically placed white van ruining everybody's photo opportunity. Thanks for that. Feeling a little deflated, we chose to drown our sorrows with a quick pint at the Turf Tavern, another famous institution in Oxford. Frequented by US ex-presidents and the cast of Harry Potter during filming, this is a local landmark. However, it is a bit of a trek to find. So please don't be put off by the wheelie bins, or stick with the path as it will bring you round to the old city walls and eventually to the tavern itself. And after a cheeky pint to quench our thirst after that little workout, we headed back to the hotel to collect our car and it was time to head home. So I hope you enjoyed our whistle stop tour around the sites of Oxford and our stay in an utterly unique hotel. And if you've enjoyed watching, check out one of our other great videos up here. But hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.